This is PG. Today's date is January 11, 2023. It's about a quarter to four here a.m. Now, if you like to follow along, you go to Isaiah 58 Ministries dot blogspot dot com. And I know the title says one thing. And I'm going to start off with the day at the miracle start, December 17, 2022. Because it came to, uh, I wrote it before I wrote the other one. And so I'm just going to make this a part one of the following one that I will be doing next. Part two will be December 24, 2022, Christmas Eve, Biblical Month, Tiev, the seventh day of Hanukkah. And the title was Trifecta. Description Part 1 The Day the Miracle Start, December 17, 2022. Whoopi Goldberg. She wants freedom from religion. It was around the Christmas holidays, December 6. She isn't alone. She is speaking for a lot of people. It means no government. See, our government is based on Christianity, on the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ. And it, she's kind of like, and those people in that um, mindset are like Marley and Scrooge. They forge many chains together. Before you use counterfeited money to buy Christmas presents, think. It is your duty. It's a right, yes. But it's your responsibility when you were born in America or you moved here to remember and venerate this coming day. It's called an advent. For It's Aventure in Latin, or to come to, it's the anniversary of our Lord's Jesus Christ's birth on Christmas. I know it's not the exact date, but it is a national holiday, and we do this as a country in unity. Now, Whoopi suggests her right to ignore religion, and of course you can ignore anything. That's your own free will trump someone else's right to practice theirs um how can we do that if practicing is preaching the gospel then um we can't have freedom of religion at all and so her right to it's a circular reasoning her right to practice her religion she can ignore us but she can't stop us or there is no freedom of religion if hers trumps somebody else's. Jesus commands to love God, to affectionately, truthfully, kindly, gently love your neighbor, make sure that they are well and happy and healthy, clean and sound minded, live in the truth, sound in body and their soul, giving you life to restore them when robbed of any of the aforementioned qualities of life and defend them. The Second Amendment speaks of this kind of true God-given love. Jesus Christ is our example. And then you can click in the description on Isaiah58Ministries.blogspot.com and you can follow along. Now, this is just something that's going to be coming up later, January 2021, 20, January 2023, 20, two years um, that Bowden's been, is, he's saying it's coming to an end. That's from Bo Pony Below, that Joe Biden started bringing down the system. He brought down the system built by Rockefeller, the Rothschilds, the Federal Reserve. It was all based on not real gold and silver, real money. It was based on black gold, which, of course, as it says, kingdom. 
It says Kingdom of Darkness. It's Ford, Fiat, Cars, Highway System, Jobs, Socialism. Of course, that's FDR. The Progressive came in with their machines and their industry. It was all tyranny. Men ruling rulers over the people. Or tyranny ruling over the people. But these people in this Rockefeller, Rothschilds, FDR, they were rulers over the people. And people were no longer in power. It wasn't government by the people, for the people. It wasn't government established by Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. He died to set us free from sin so we can love God with all that's in us. And we can love our neighbor as ourselves and live by the laws of God, which is love. Everybody became workers instead of thinkers. And that was their desire, was Ford's desire, was FDR's desire, Rockefeller, Rothschild's. They wanted to change all of us from free human beings to their slaves, to their workers, to work in their industries, to work in their factories. And they didn't want us thinking because if we think, we're above them because we're free men. And we have God in us. And these people are ruled by a devil. They're ruled by greed. The system where the system is bad is good and good is bad. A system where bad is good and good is bad. Mother staying home raising her children was very bad. Because it, women should be working for them and their slaves. Public education is very good because then we have a collective system or welfare system or socialistic system where our people, the adults are workers and the children are in school all day long. A real money like gold and silver coins, that's bad. That gives people independence and they're obeying God and they're obeying scripture and they're obeying the constitution. Men farming at home teaching educating their children, that's very bad. Because that's what God's called them all to do. That's what called God's called men and women to be at home raising and teaching their own children. It's nature. Nature it just comes natural. That's what you're supposed to do. All these institutions like public schools or industries or whatever, that's unnatural. It's against the constitution. It's socialism or um men being ruled by other men instead of being ruled by God as equals. Piles of money, greed rules the world to be wealthy. And it is good, but it's all fake, counterfeited money printed out of thin air. They don't have any real gold and silver. So you're living in an illusionary life. You're living in a, a life of lies and just lie to each other. And it's you've been deceived by the devil. Because money, only real money is gold and silver. So if you th believe their counterfeited money is real or if it's, you believe it's backed by gold, you've been deceived by the devil. Uh, men divorcing, divorcing, divorcing their wives for young or prettier girls, half their age is good, and that's what we had with our recent president. Having an affair or mistress, mistress is what this is called. Immoral people are the really good people; they're the cool people. But when you're wholesome and clean, living, and you're doing the right thing and you're obeying God. Well, that's bad. That's queer. That's uncool. And John Locke's second treatise, I'll get to it later. Nobody has originally a private dominion uh, exclusive of the rest of mankind. So you have the Davos group. They don't have a country. They don't have a nation like the uh, Vatican or London or D.C. They are called independent states. They're free from any laws or rules anybody makes. Well, that's just not true. Nobody has any private dominion exclusive of the rest of mankind. We're all equal. And those who claim that are trying to be tyrants over everybody else. They're trying to be like Alexander the Great or something and run the rule, rule the world, and make everybody their slaves. That's people on a real ego trip. They're really in delusional minds. December 16, 2022, Thursday. So I already read part of that to put in my description. And then you can go to the article where Whoopi suggests her right to ignore religion trumps everybody else's right to practice theirs. See, that's um, what John Locke is writing against in his second treaty of um, 
government, nobody has originally a private dominion exclusive of the rest of mankind. And the courts in New York said that one person, one right that's in the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, does not trump another one. They're all equal. So somebody's right to feel safe and there are no guns doesn't trump the person's right to feel safe to carry a gun to protect themselves. One person's right to feel safe that they're not putting poison in their body and they, you know, they know exactly what's going in their body. That makes them feel safe. The person who fears and goes ahead and poisons their body out of fear and wants everybody else to put poison in their body out of fear doesn't trump the person who has um, fear of that poison that they're putting in their body. They're, um, they're equal. I can't say the word, but you know what I'm talking about, the roller up the sleever. Somebody's so afraid, they think everybody should roll up their sleeve. And they think they're right. Everybody has to do what they are doing, the way they do it. But that doesn't trump because they don't have a, a right... Um, um, they don't have a right um, private dominion exclusive of the rest of mankind where they can make people do things what they want to do. Like the um, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, the Fords, FDR. They don't have the right to make everybody else do it their way. The progressives want to put everybody in factories because they think that is right. But they don't have that right. And glancing through here, I wanted to say, please remember Diamond and Silk and their families. Jesus commands all men, whether you're a man or woman, it's in the Declaration of Penance, in the Constitution, it's our laws. And if you read John Locke, every man has the right to be loved. And you have to care about them and feel for them. And the healthiest, happiest life is to be good. As much as we have this men trying to tell men that... um. Being good and wholesome, clean living is bad. It's actually very good. Everybody has a right to be very good. And you'll find that in Declaration of Independence that all laws, men must uplift the laws that make for a wholesome, good, clean life. They cannot back and support those who did or moralize because the whole country will be defiled by their immorality. And no one has the right to make everybody else filthy and dirty while they're sin. In the Bible, it says, one immoral person destroys the morality of other people. And you can't allow that. And that's in the Declaration of Independence too. No one, um, if you allow evil, the people suffer. History has proven when evil is tolerated, people suffer. You can't suffer immoral people and let them sin and get away with sin because they have to care about everybody else. Because one person's sin can bring the whole country down and that's where you get that statement that one apple, one rotten apple will spoil the whole bunch. And so one person getting, giving in to sin and temptation to sin can destroy your whole nation. That's why we teach religion and that's in the Northwest Ordinance. It's in Ohio's Constitution. Morality and religion will always be taught and encouraged to keep people happy, healthy, safe, clean-minded, they're not going to be going out robbing and stealing and lying and breaking the law. So Jesus' commandments to love God and to affectionately, truthfully, kindly, gently love your neighbor, make sure they are well and happy. And I read that in the description too. And Jesus commanded all people, Mark sixteen fifteen. he has said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures, creation, and he who has believed in me and has been baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who has not believed will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly or poisonous, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover and this is the greatest gift of all that God gives us his power to go into the world, gives us his spirit, his words, that we can cast out demons and we can um, heal the sick and make them well. And that's why we celebrate Christmas and that's why we establish this country 
as the body of Christ. I'm talking about this greatest gift of all is Jesus Christ. And America was established by the body of Christ, those who believe in Jesus Christ. All of the founding fathers were believers in Jesus Christ. They carried the gospel, the power of God, the Holy Spirit within them. They agreed on what was right and what was wrong according to the Bible. And they based what they did and believed on the Bible. So John Quincy Adams and early American citizens will tell you, you cannot separate the birth of our nation as in each state, nor from the birth of our union as state. So you can't separate each state like Virginia or Mass or Maryland or Maine. You can't separate them nor the Union of States from the birth of Jesus Christ. It's because of his birth that the Declaration was written for liberty, for life, for liberty, for pursuit of happiness for all men. So men are treated equally. That all comes from Christianity. And so those who believe of freedom from religion, they don't mind if others hurt other people. They don't mind if somebody steals. They don't mind if people are immoral. They don't mind if um, people are discriminated against. They don't mind in slavery. They have no ethics or morals that come from a relationship with Jesus Christ. So they won't stand up for your rights, but they only stand up for the right of criminals. And we see that in America today. Everything flip-flopped because they're lying. They say America isn't established on Christianity when it absolutely is the foundation of Christian. This nice is America absolutely is founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Freedom for all. And men must fight for each other's right to be good, moral, clean, wholesome, healthy people. America, you can't separate America from the birth of Jesus Christ. So this Christmas, take off your hat, sit down in church, and be grateful for America. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that Jesus paid for with his life. I mean, there's no way for salvation. And in my last video, I say, it's not so easy to jump in a med bed and get healed. What motivation would there be for men to clean their lives up? The reason you clean your life up because you want to be healthy. If you don't have a clean moral life, then you're going to be sick and ill. But if each time you sin, you do something bad, and you get sick, you just jump in a med bed. That's not the solution. That's why nothing will heal you. Only Jesus can heal you. I mean, it was so important for people to be healthy that God had to send Jesus to die on the cross for permanent health and permanent happiness and to be grateful for this life. And the liberty and pursuit of happiness that Jesus paid for with his life. So we can all live by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit makes us holy and wholesome and clean. See, life is in the blood. And then Jesus comes into us and all life is given to us through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. He bought you from Satan's power over your soul, over your mind and your emotions with his blood shed on the cross. Then we have a quote from John Quincy Adams. Is it not that in the chain of human events, the birth of a nation is indissolubly linked with the birthday of the Savior from here on out? You can never se separate America's birth from Jesus Christ. It's eternal. It's an eternal covenant. That it formed a leading event in the progress of the gospel of dis dispensation. Not the progress of machines or the progress of enslaving people to socialism and communism. The progress of freedom and liberty and life. The prog progress of the spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and setting men free from Satan's power of their minds so they can live according to the Holy Spirit and the dictates of their own conscience according to the Holy Spirit, which is your conscience. It is not that the Declaration of Independence and live by the truth and only the truth. Right now we have a system where they tell you you have to lie. 
I mean, you see it every day on the news. Every law, the new law they pass, they're trying to tell you have to lie and you have to sin and you have to tolerate those who lie and sin and you have to go along with their fantasy worlds. And then their perks and their quirks and stuff, which isn't true. Their rights don't triumph the rights of the Constitution where men have the right to live a clean, moral, healthy life. They must hide what they do in the closet like they're because they can't defile the rest of the country or the rest of the nation. So I'm over here with the picture still. Is it not that in the chain of human events, the birth of a nation is indissolubly linked with the birthday of the Savior? He saved us from Satan's power. He saved us from this filthy, immoral lives. By giving us his spirit and his Holy Spirit, as you seek his spirit every day, you'll be clean. By it, you'll know the truth, and the truth sets you free. That it forms a leading event in the progress of the gospel of dispensation. Is it not that the Declaration of Independence first organized the social compact on the foundation of the Redeemer's mission on earth? That it laid the cornerstone of human government upon the first precepts of Christianity. So they can't lie about it anymore. The only money is gold and silver, women staying home raising their children, men owning land and farming, and using gold and silver is the right way to live. And that's good and wholesome, and that's what you have the right, a godly right to do. You don't have a right to sin and use counterfeit money. No one has a right to use a checkbook. No one has a right to use anything counterfeit like mortgages and leases and loans. You don't have a right for any of that. It's all counterfeit. It's... um immoral and it's not just and fair to everybody you notice only one people one set of people get to print the money well if one person can print money then everybody can and how many billions of people are in the world that means we'd have billion types of money printed up whereas god limited to men just gold and silver and it must all be equal in shape and value and how much purity and um, how much it's worth. And, and so we have, in my other video, Jum, David Morgan, I think his name is, said silver is the word for money. Universal, like hallelujah is universal. Well, silver is universal for money. Not crypto, not fiat, not loan or lease or checkbooks. No, the real silver it starts with that, and it's universal. It's what is, and we don't have to lie about it. I mean, just stop lying about, say, you got paper. It's not money, and it's not backed by anything. It never was. The whole thing was a fraud. The more you tell the truth, the freer you are, the healthier you are, and you will have what you need. They put you into fear, think, if you don't use their money, if you don't pay your taxes, if you don't use that paper, you're going to die. That's fear. That's tyranny. Tyrants rule by fear and lies and deceit. Whereas you start telling the truth, you're going to find yourself more free, healthier, happier, living with a clean conscience that you told the truth. Hey, guy, silver is the only money there is. I mean, you know, silver, gold, okay? It's the only real money. Don't lie to me. And you're not going to lie. You're not going to counterfeit me. You're not going to defraud me. If you're going to pay me something, give me the gold and the silver, real money. And don't tell me you have all this money and you're worth so much because you all this paper. It's just counterfeited and you're a fraud. You know, you go to your class reunion, all these people tell you how, how successful they are. You are far out frauds. You didn't obtain it through good, healthy, wholesome living. Question. Do you use gold and silver coins now? Answer. Whenever possible. God is with us for that. He wants men to be honest. God is against counterfeiters. More importantly, we should all be against counterfeiters. God is against, um, God answers our prayers. If you read James 5, once you repent of using counterfeited money and ask God to help you use gold and silver coins, and you confess this sin and say, God, I'm sorry. Help me make amends for the wrongs I've done. Help me make it right. And then if you go on to James like 15, 16, you confess this sin, then God starts hearing your prayers and answers your prayers. 
and you have a much more closer relationship with God and healing with your neighbors, you'll be more sincere. Like I would never lie to my children about Santa Claus. Well, I did lie about counterfeit money. I didn't know. But now I have to go back and say, I'm sorry. I should have told you about silver. I should have told you about gold. I should have said, we're honest people. and We can only use gold and silver. Yeah, we won't have electricity. Yeah, we won't because they're all criminals. They're all counterfeiters. You won't have telephones. We won't have all the things that your friends have because they're all defrauding one another. They're frauding their neighbor and they're not using gold and silver. They're not being honest in each other and they're living in this imagination. And they're putting confidence in something man-made, a man-made idol that isn't real. The laws of God are absolute. You will end up paying for all those sins of not using gold and silver. You just, you will. Leah did a whole show yesterday about slavery. The whole country will pay for slavery. The whole country will pay for abortion. It's, there's a laws you got to live by. You can't murder your child just by changing the name of it to a fetus. It's a baby. Okay? It's like you can't change a boy to a girl, a girl to a girl, boy, and then you want to be married to them because you want to legalize the worst sin on the face of this earth, which you know what that is. That's why they keep wanting to change things so they can legalize doing bad, 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 bad things. And you just change the word, like change a baby in a womb to a fetus. See, a boy and a girl, girl and a boy, you know, and then you sexualize all of them. They're trying to break down your morals. That's what immoral people do. And that's why, I think it's in Corinthians, an immoral person will break down all the morals around them. So we have to do as the Declaration of Independence says and do not tolerate immorality. And then this Northwest Ordinance says, it is necessary for good, wholesome government that all the people are taught morals and religion. It's our duty. It's our responsibility as members of society. Now, if you want to find an island somewhere and stay away from all other people, I don't, you, you take somebody else to sin. Because to sin, you have to hurt somebody else. And you have to just stay away from people. And that way you won't sin. And you don't have to hear about being responsible to make sure everybody has a moral, um, upstanding life. This is Rafi Farber. The silver stackers will rescue the global division of labor. So just trading gold. So never underestimate Keynesian hubris. They think the dollar is the ultimate asset until the end of time when hyperinflation destroys it, and they will go down with the ship as India and Russia build their own. And finally, let's go into central bank bankruptcy land again. We have this new, very thorough and honest article from The Telegraph by Neil Record here. It says, we made an appalling mistake, so the Bank of England needs a $188 billion bailout. As interest rates rise, we're about to suffer the consequences of a decade of reckless spending. Now listen to this. This guy, Neil Record, made his own math here, trying to figure out how big of a hole is on the Bank of England's balance sheet. So he says here, I have used the published list of gilts, those are British bonds, from the APF holds. The APF is the subsidiary that holds these bonds by gilt, coupon and maturity, and have calculated somewhat approximately but broadly accurately the effect on the APF's gilt value as versus gilt yields. The graph below shows the results. So here we have a 3.5% interest rate and the value of the gilts in the balance sheet sees a loss of 3.5%, oh, sorry, a loss of about 188 billion pounds. And that loss gets greater and greater and greater as interest rates rise. To help the layman interpret, he says, the chart is telling us that the treasury now has to bail out the bank to the tune of around 188 billion at today's 3.5% 15-year gilt rates. You see here that central banks across the Western world are indeed going bankrupt. The Fed is losing money. It is printing money to cover those holes. The Bank of England is, lo is losing money. It is printing money to cover those holes. And you have completely unbacked currency starting to circulate in the monetary system. At some point, a wire is tripped 
and there is a run on these banks themselves. The bailouts since 2008 have taken all the bad assets that have accumulated during this fiat system all the way back beginning in 1971, or maybe even earlier if you want to count from 1934. They've taken those bad assets and they've put them on the balance sheets of the central banks, which are now stuck with them. They cannot offload them onto anyone else because they are the currency creators themselves. And those bad assets are starting to rot now on these balance sheets and they are losing money and printing it to plug up those holes and when that happens you have the process of hyperinflation it is unavoidable now it is only a question of when the wave hits and when it does as we are seeing in austria a gold rush that is mostly by wealthy people the public which is not so wealthy is going to wake up as well and they're not going to chase gold they're going to chase silver which is why the ratio is going to fall back to 15 to 1. And it's the silver stackers that will save the monetary system. And only secondarily, the gold stackers. Hope you enjoyed. So that was the title of the show. And if you think of it this way, every dollar they print is a lie. It's deceit. It's made out of thin air. They don't have a dollar. So each dollar is a lie. And in any time you lie, you have to make more lies and make more lies and make more lies to cover up the lies because your lies are exposed like you say you child child there's santa claus and it's snowing out and he comes down the chimney well then they're going to say well what happens when santa claus and it's not snowing and then how is he going to fit down the chimney you have to continue to lie to your child and it's the same with fiat dollars or crypto they have to lie and lie and lie and lie to cover up the holes in their lies. It's like Darwinism or Freud. Their psychology and, and their evolution. They People question it and then they have to cover it up. Why do you think the government wants to censor everything? There are too many holes in all their lies. And so when people say, well, what about this? What about this? They just don't want to lie. So they just shut you up and then... Nobody knows those questions that you have. And that's why we have freedom of speech. Because when somebody comes along and they're lying and lying lying, we say, wait a minute, that's a lie. And that's how counterfeit money is. And why you always want to use gold and silver. Honest men don't have to lie and keep lying. You know, when you use gold and silver, you really have it. And you're not covering up that you're lying that, about it. But I really noticed that when he said that they want bailouts and they're just covering up their um, they're covering up their past bailouts and then they're covering up their past bailouts and they're covering up their interest rates and they're all every dollar of this paper or on paper or electronic they're all lies. That's how many lies are out there in the world. They look at a silver dime, a silver quarter, a silver half dollar. Um, you look at a um, gold piece. You're looking at the truth. Okay, now Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is made of the purest and purest of gold. And he's what he's really talking about is the truth. Heaven is made of the purest, translucent truth. Honesty. And have good government. You need this honesty in the people. And then the government is honest. So every day, pick up, pick up your little silver gold, silver or gold piece. Say, I'm looking at the truth. I'm looking at something that's pure, that's been heated in a fire, and all the junk is taken out of it. And that's what God wants to do to us. So God's working in me. He's putting me in heat, and as I come to the heat to the furnace, then all the purities come to the surface. And I'm going to be spotless when he, Jesus is coming for a spotless um, bride without wrinkles. We're going to be clean and we're going to be pure. And the Holy Spirit takes us into those places where we know the truth. And the truth gets, the truth sets you free because you're free from the darkness of lies. And you're full of light. And um, my next one will be about light. Um, the trifecta. This is fantastic. Um... This lady was bit by a snake, but she does everything homopathic, I think that's the word, at home. 
and she she has all these home remedies and she uses the weeds and everything like that and this is the first time she had this problem she got bit by a snake but she almost died but her husband her daughter got on the internet and found about um they read about um grandma's old-fashioned poultice uh, the most cure-all that came to a sticky end, made from linseed, flour, mustard, and they were prescribed for all types of ailments. What it does is it draws things out, and it starts to heal. And so if you get the bug, make yourself a poultice. Because Leah did that, and it really helped her a lot. Um, she went to this natural... Um, Way of doing things through practice for thousands of years, the use of poultice in general medicine fell out of favor before this publication had reached its uh, sanitary. The poultice is a moist concoction, usually heated, spread on an injury, ache, or wound, held in place with a cloth. It's sometimes known as a plaster. When the poultice was smeared on a bandage before application, the most popular seemed to be made of bread, linseed, or mustard mixed with water. The use of bran, flour, starch was also common, and medical preparation or herbs such as comfrey or harsh radish root were often added to the mix. Irish Times Household Hints column in 1885 recommended a pound or so of coarsely crushed linseed should always be kept in the house in an airtight tin. Also, a tin of mustard, chamomile flour, and poppy heads for poultice and fermentation. The poultice were believed to draw out inflammation and infection. They were prepared for a range of complaints such as boils, toothaches, bunions, abscesses, splinters, chillblains, and styes. Even the treatment of serious illnesses such as TB and cholera often involves some of the poultice being administered to the patient. Both doctors and nurses were trained how to make and apply. We know why this isn't recommended anymore because witchcraft took over. Pharma means witchcraft. So those who want to rule the world, that's the devil in them. They want, um, they don't want, they want to use this cur these lies, these counterfeit lies. You know, and they want to keep printing and lying and lying and lying. They can't stop themselves. So they shut things that were real and natural, like gold and silver and mothers standing and raising their children, men farming, milk from milking your cow, and natural, normal, healthy, the way God created things. They made that all really bad and made you doubt it. And that's what the devil does. Oh, did God really say this or that, he just knows you'll be more like him. You'll be more like God if you do this evil, sinful thing instead. So, if you go to the blog, Isaiah58Ministries.blogspot.com, and you go to the description, the link is there. All these links for this is in the blog. I'm just thinking this is for the bug list. I'm like, oh, that comes a little later in in this article or the blog I made because that's really interesting too winter time and threats from evil workers workers of darkness witches wizards etc sickness may happen another one's coming well you know what you need God God save us grandmothers who knew home remedies as a mom you remember what works this is something that this lady says in, when she's talking to Lynette. M Marjorie Wildcraft. She's saying as a mom, you remember what works. Because you hate to see your child sick. You hurt for them. So you listen to Grandma. Because Grandma knows. Turning guest, Marjorie Wildcraft from the Grow Network. And she's going to talk about, you know, something that's really critical, which is if you are in a circumstance, how do you take care of yourself? And so she talked about a personal experience that she had and how she healed it with poulticing. 
and how she took care of the pain levels with homemade painkillers and natural antibiotics and all the different things that we're going to need to know, especially in a bug out circumstance. So I'm so happy to have her back. She just brings just so much to this network. Marjorie, thank you for being here today. If you think that the things like that, because I actually had an incident recently with one of my puppies, Juliet, and she got bit by a rattlesnake. Right on the nose, right? <laughs> no, right on the right on the leg. And it it I had on just the leg. Yes, I had just gotten up there. I had an appointment on on the computer. So I walked through the door. I did my appointment. I got off the appointment and I'm looking at her leg and I'm like, what in the world happened to you? Because it like blew up like a balloon. And so Angus actually rushed her down to the emergency vet and it was, was quite an ordeal. So I think it's really important for everybody to know, again, to be as self-sufficient and independent as possible. But when these things happen and there's really almost no place to go, what if that help isn't available? Yeah. Well, I've got a great story. Uh, it's a true story. And it's, uh, I think it's actually chapter nine of the book, but we'll, we'll, I'll tell it to you. And it's, it's, it's uh, very empowering. And it's also, I've got a lot of practical, like five things you need to have in place before you want to start treating something as major as a snake bite at home. But it is something that you can do. I mean, you know, as I always say with home medicine, you know, don't start trying to cure cancer, you know, do the coughs, do the you know, the bruises, do the headache and the sore throat, you know, get familiar with plant medicines and use them. But let me tell the story because it's, uh, it's just a really great story. So I was breaking the number one rule in homesteading and in life. And that is don't put your hands or your feet where you can't see them. <laughs> it's just pretty simple, right? Don't pretty stick good your rule. hand in a hole. Right? You know, it's a great rule. And, um, but I'll tell you what happened was I had had um, my first crop of tomatoes got hit by an arteries and I had the backup plants, right? And I put them out. And then for whatever reason, I had some ducks that went in there and they didn't eat them, but they sat on all of them. And so I had, I was like scrounging around the whole county is looking for tomato plants because everybody got hit by the freeze. And the only thing left were these beefsteak tomatoes, which do not grow well in central Texas at all. But that was the only thing I'd find. So I'd grown these beefsteak tomato plants and they were like, you know, I was coddling these babies and they yeah. were just like this huge jungle in my garden area. It was amazing. And there was this one on the edge that was just, I mean, this really, you had to have two hands to hold this tomato. It wow. was the most amazing. I was like, why can't there be a tomato fair right now? And I could win it. <laughs> like, right. Just the most amazing, beautiful specimen of a beefsteak, which is almost, in, it's, it's like impossible to grow that in Central Texas. And I thought, oh my God, I wonder if there's more. And that is when I started breaking the rule because I started, you know, put that to the side and I was just going through the foliage, just busting through the, I mean, really these tomato plants were like, you know, six feet high and it's like wow. a jungle in there. They were just loving it. And, um, and then I felt this bang on my top side of my foot, which I thought at first. Um, and and when I when I felt it, I, I jerked back involuntarily, and I felt it dig in a little bit more. And at first, I thought, oh, it's a cat's claw vine. And I, and I said, wait a minute, I don't have any cat's claw vines in my garden. Like that's not, you know. And then I thought, fire no, it's way too strong to be a fire ant. And then like scorpion, I don't know. And then I'm like, oh, I yeah. Uh, let me look down, right? So I look down, and there's the telltale two holes that were separated by a little less than a half an inch apart. And to do yes. this. The other thing is, is you know, have a plan, and then have a plan B, and then have a plan C, if you can, you know, um, uh, you know, and and have worked that out ahead of time uh, and, and a rough procedure for how you're going to handle uh, emergencies like this. Well, Another having having you as a resource 
because all of this is in, I think it's in chapter nine in the yeah. grow book, right? Yeah. Yeah. The grow system book. Yeah. So it's, the, it's it, it, to have those resources too, so that you can go to and refresh your memory like your husband was able to do was huge. In the moment. Yeah. Yep. Huge. Yeah. I have used my own resources myself. Like one time my daughter comes in the middle of the night with a fever and my mind goes completely blank and I can't remember anything. And so I go look at my own stuff and I'm like, <laughs> okay you know because your mom you're freaking out this is your baby you know in the moment you it, it's crazy right so a, a couple of other things that was really important about this one is i eat really good quality food mm -hmm. i know my body i trust my body you know i i had a sense of i knew when i would have to call and go okay let's go to the hospital or when not, mm -hmm. right? And I knew that I would communicate that. And my husband knew that I would would communicate that. There have been times when I've been in weird situations and I said, we got to go, you know? <laughs> right. So, you know, he knows that I will, and and everybody should know that you, you there, there are a lot of things you cannot handle at home and you kind of really have to, um, uh, you know, and, but I also, I've worked with my body enough. I heal enough. I know my immune system is very, very strong. I eat really well. You know, I get lots of vitamin D3, all the good stuff, right? So I, that's another very important uh, component. The other is, you know, the other, you and I can do a thing on the six forms of wealth one time, but family, <laughs> having family right. that... You know, my daughter, actually, this story is really, I, I gave, I used to publish the story just as a little book, and I gave it to some school teachers one time. And the, the feedback was that book, the fourth graders checked that book out year after year, it got dog-eared, I ended up having to give them more copies. And I nice. think what that is, is they resonated with Kimber as playing a very significant role mm -hmm. in, in my treatment and how important that even as a young person, you know, I, was, I don't know how old she was at that point in time, you know, like 11 or 12 or something like that. But she was very important to that whole uh, process. And the, and the young kids are very inspired like that. Uh, fourth graders are about nine years old, but they they really looked up to Kimber in the book, in the in the story. So um, that that chapter nine is a story that you can read to your kids and, and, and they'll, they'll like it. <laughs> so and they may uh, retain they some of it, too. I mean, yeah, because, you, you you know, you kind of have these experiences where you, you read these things and you kind of keep them in the back of your mind till you need to pull them out. So mm -hmm. you don't know where, where that, you're planting a seed, which is an important seed. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yes. And then the other thing is, so, you know, you know, know your hazards, have a plan B, you know, um, have family, you know, have resources know your own body and your own strength and your limits and when you're going to when you're going to execute plan b or c and 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 the you know the final the final thing is is practice on small things first right and you you could do this with a snake bite right out of the box if it's a downright emergency but you don't know, start with a small laceration, you know, somebody cuts themselves and, and experiences um, this. Actually, one of my team, uh, she's since moved on. She had a, uh, she before she worked for us, she was kind of checking us out. And I forget what she had. Was it a staph infection or something on her nose, right? And, and really bad. And she didn't have insurance. You know, couldn't afford to go to the hospital. And she was like, well, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking about working for this Marjorie lady. You're talking about poulticing. Like, I could poultice this for one day and see what it's like and then go to the hospital, you know, you know, right. I could just try this. Right. And so she poulticed it up and I forgot what she used. I think she, she, I forget what she used, but she was like, she was amazed within 24 hours. It got, you know, more than significantly better. And she's like, forget it. I'm not going to the hospital, you know, so practice on, on smaller things. You Such know, some of my first attempts was a, a little boy who had a, like a sprained toe or something like that. And I made a poultice for him and we kept it on him and showed his mom what to do. And she was blown away that, you know, within, within, you know, a day or so this, this thing was showing significant progress. Um, it, it's, you know, so practice on small things that are not going to be lethal if you mm -hmm. screw it up, right? You know? Right, right. And, 
and and you'll develop a relationship with these medicines and you'll you'll de develop a relationship with these plants and you'll develop a relationship with yourself to trust yourself to know how to handle things in an emergency um so you know practice practice and, yeah. and do it all. And there's all kinds of small things that happen i promise you <laughs> <laughs> there is and it's so important to have the ability to count on yourself in these circumstances but i love having plan a right and plan b and plan c so that regardless of what happens you're going to be okay you know i think this is critical So you can go to um, Beyond Gold and Silver and you can learn more about where you can get more information. But that was fascinating. I wanted to share that with everybody when I did this blog. And it's about the old fashioned remedies that were worked. You know, and does there's no um you know, when you take a drug there's always four or five problems that the drug call caused afterwards. Whereas with natural remedy, you just get better, you just get healed, and you know it works. So December 16, 2022, Wednesday, no one is above the laws of God. No one. America's liberty is based on honesty. Honesty comes with faith in God and in His Word. Each man is accountable before God to have just weights and balances. Honesty. Scales. Uh, honest scales, honest weights, and gold and silver coins. On Judgment Day, God asked if you were an honest person. Did you obey him? Did you buy and sell using weights and balances of gold and silver coins? What the bad guys did is they wanted to just use black gold and back everything with black gold. And again, that's out of thin air. It's not something everybody can use. It's not fair and just. Did you buy and sell using uh, weights and balances of gold and silver coins? Since you were born, see, when you come to the Lord, you repent of everything you've ever done. If you lie to anybody, you go back over your life, you think, what did I do wrong? Who did I sin against? And you want to apologize or tell them the truth if you lied to them so they can be healed of any lie. And you just keep repenting till it's all cleaned up and you've made amends and you ask God for his wonderful power to fix anything you might have broken or hurt somebody or hurt yourself or hurt anybody else. Ask God for his miraculous power that we read about in the beginning to make it all right and to heal. Or broke a heart, then you broke somebody's heart, then you will go back and heal the broken hearted. Usually when we break somebody's heart, it's out of fear. <laughs> you know, boys, girls, whatever, and you fall in love or whatever, and then you you get away from that person because you and you like might have broke the heart but you were afraid of some reason or um being honest with your child and telling them the truth when all their friends are saying this 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 and this and you want to say no they're lying to you and the child you won't don't want to break their heart my mom said well i want to hurt their feelings but mom you know they're lying well that would hurt their feelings it's like you tell them you know the truth and then they're set free and then they know somebody cared about and loved them enough to tell them the truth and to tell them don't lie, you know. Then you have to cover up another lie, another lie. It's a waste of a life. There is no excuse before God. And then we have the Coinage Act of 1792. We all agreed from the beginning of the foundation of the United States of America. We the people, we agreed as people, a government by the people, for the people, on the Bible. And we agreed to have just weights and, ba weights and balances and scales, according to the Bible. We agreed to hire men to make our money the same. So all the money in America is the same. And so we all obey God at the same time. And that's how U.S. men supposed to do. We even hired the president to ensure, part of the Coinage Act, the president is to ensure the high quality and just weights and balances of all the gold and silver of all our money. That's gold and silver. We don't have presidents like that. Because, like I said, there, most people are like whoopee. They want freedom from having to do the right thing. And, and be good and honest people. And use just gold and silver. They'd rather lie, 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 lie. That's why every fiat dollar is a lie. 
to ensure the president is supposed to ensure the high quality of the gold and silver and the assay are supposed to do that there's two people who are supposed to check the gold and silver out every year to make it's coming off is coming off the assembly line equally and that's corny jack to, um uh, so um april 2nd 1792 this is based on being honest it's the most honest you can be we hired a director assayer a chief coiner an engraver and a treasurer and then the treasurer hired clerks and workmen and servants as necessary and um, it's all su subject to the appropriation of the president of the united states he's supposed to make sure all these people are very very honest because at the end of this if anybody does any dishonesty with the money their the punishment is a felony and suffer death so it's very very serious law just weights and balances revelation 6 5 and 6 black horse carries the black horse this is really good news for those who are downtrodden, for those who are meek, for those who have low spirits, Jesus came to build you up and raise you up and put you in power, a place of power and authority. That's what this black horse is taking the ordinary person. And they've been beaten, they've been drowned hard, they've been broken hearted, they've been treated like garbage. Jesus comes to them and fills them with power and makes them kings on this earth and makes them high priests on this earth. And so revelation is God revealed to an individual and Christ coming to them and teaching them about justice. And what we're talking about is money that's just and fair. And that's when, um, for us who have been treated so badly, God comes and empowers us so we can bring this justice. That's the founding fathers were bringing justice. The King of England had treated them unfairly, unjustly, inhumanely. He wanted to be a tyrant. And God came and said, I love you. I will give you power to overthrow this tyrant. And he's given each of us. So this book of Revelation on, on the fourth, the third uh, black horse is justice. You see justice wear robes of black. You see priests are uh, used to be. Okay, we're not talking about last hundred years. Last hundred years we just live on lies and lies and lies. But I'm talking about the founding nation. Black meant power and authority. And so each of us become this black horse and we receive God's power and authority and now we carry the scales. And we go around the scales and we ask that each person, is your money fair? Is your money just? Is your money pure gold? Is your money pure silver? And basically we tell people to repent. Stop sinning. And that's what James 5 is all about. It's woe to you counterfeiters. God will always remember what you've done. Repent of that. Confess you've counterfeited money. You weren't fair to your neighbor. You weren't fair to your family. You weren't fair to each other. And God help me use just weights and balances. Help me make sure my neighbor is using just weights and balances. Because everybody has the right to be loved and treated fair and justly. That's what love is. You treat somebody fairly, honestly, truthfully. And this is very good news. God's judgment to those counterfeiting, dealing in sin and corruption. God asks this question. A silver dime is equal to three flour sacks of barley or one flour sack of wheat. James 5, cha excuse me, ja James chapter 5. If you confess the sin of breaking the law of counterfeiting, written in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 10. Confess, you use counterfeited money. God will forgive you and heal you and compensate all those people who you did not give gold and silver to. And heal them and forgive them. As the Father, forgive us. Thy will be done. Forgive us our sins. Forgive those who sinned against us. And you save your soul from all these trillions of lies and dealing with corruption and counterfeiting money. And you don't have to lie like the central bankers keep saying, you have to bail us out with more. But that means I'm just going to lie some more for you and cover up some more for you. And then you end up with, like Ravi said, um, hyperinflation. We don't have to have hyperinflation. We don't have to have all this stuff. We don't have any inflation. Just we have honesty. And life is so much easier for all of us. We can all stop lying. 
and we save our souls. Amos 8. Men make gold a lot more and silver really low in value to enslave other men. They did this in the beginning of our country. The King of England would not let any gold come to America. The king made the gold so great and so wonderful, so fast, worth so much, and he devalued the value of silver. To enslave other men, the Bible has all the answers. Remember, Rome was burned, London was burned. This destroying to rebuild has gone through, done throughout history by tyrants. So you know they're saying they're going to tear everything down to rebuild. Whether it's um, Trump even said he's going to re re rebuild back better or uh, more better or something much better I forget but it's two competing lying systems based on um, continuation of lying and if once they destroy the system we the people are gonna get the land and we'll build our own houses we'll build our own homes we'll build our own lives we don't need them being busybodies in our lives they can rebuild their own houses their own barns but don't expect us to work for them anymore because we're not slaves. We are equal to one another. Because they purposely are burning it down both sides. You know, Republican, Democrat, and people around the world. So they can print a brand new kind of money and get, continue this fraud. And continue to try and dominate everybody in the world. This destroying rebuilding has done, done throughout history. But we, through Jesus Christ, we say no enough Jesus comes into us and that's why revelation this is so important it's Jesus coming within us he tells us that it says here a barley for a penny that's a silver dime a day's wage a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny we're telling them this is what the silver is worth this is what silver dime is you use it I use it we all use it and God's the central bank now God is the one who tells us what the money is. God's the one who says that the value of the money is. God tells us the purity of the money. It, God is going to be the central. He's going to be the head for everybody. So the system is fair and just. And somebody else can't rule over another person. Because that's a criminal. You know, if there's two people fighting, they can't agree. You need an arbitrary to come in there. An arbiter to come in there. Well, Jesus Christ is that. The Bible is that. A mediator. And the mediator comes in and says, You're wrong and you're wrong. You're both wrong. Because Jesus is right. And then they have to check everything out with what Jesus said. And then be right. And that's where we get into the trifactor in the next video. So, this is something you might want to add to your bug list. God's spiritual power protects you from these witches, wizards who poison people using, you know what? Plus their words are, you know what, their words are the same thing. So you're poisoned by their words, by their actions, by their immorality, by their lies. Uh, every dollar is a lie, okay? Paper dollar. And so it's another bite, okay? Um, but the, it's demonic, it's the fiery darts of the devil. What we do with the power that destroys it is preaching the gospel. As you preach the gospel, you can protect your brain, your body, your ears from their poisonous lies. They send you through the frequencies and vibrations and sound and the 5G and the music and the TV and the videos and the computers and AI. That's the helmet of salvation is gospel. It's Holy Spirit speaking through you. Speaking Jesus' words, he gives you to speak, and that you speak the truth, the um, Holy Spirit of truth. Now, um, excuse me, I think it's over here, yeah. So you go to Isaiah 58 Ministries on December 13th, 2022. Go down to the side here, it gives you the dates, of when it was written, where it was written, and the names and articles, the blogs written. So I watched a couple TV shows and um, I made a blog I, um, not offering medical advice, sharing doctor's testimonies. And then if you go to Resistance Chicks, you go here, you pull it up, resistancechicks.com. 
I thought I'd be able to do it easily. Oh, there it is. Okay, type in the search bar. You can just put three simple letters, bug. And then search. And there's several articles written on it. What to do before you get the bug. What to do if your family gets the bug. Um, anything that has to do with that bug or bugs, I guess, is coming up here. But the most important one seems like the best articles are right in the beginning on the first page on resistant chicks when you put in the word bug in the search bar. And that's where I put this blog. I put this blog in um, that. I just updated it. So the, the information you'll find on here is in the resistancechicks.com medicine cabinet. And that is being the this one right here seems to be the forefront, the top runner right now. But when we love with the love and power of God, and we do this repentance from the counterfeit, everything you do by the Holy Spirit produces a miracle, produces life, produces health to everybody around us. What we do for them brings death and sickness and disease when we use the counterfeit. When we turn around, we start using gold and silver, we bring life, we bring health to everybody, peace, happiness, worth, and value to our fellow man. We say, you were something to me, and we pay him with silver and gold. You are somebody. When you're using the fiat, you're saying, you're nobody, I don't care about you, your life is worthless to me. Okay? But everybody has the right to be respected and loved and valued by each other. And that's what gold and silver does. So it's a whole show, and I won't get into it now. That will be, I have to be another show. It, I've already gone on too long here. I'll probably have to break this into two parts. So expect me to come back and talk about um, the final nuclear chess move. Bo Pony and David uh, Rodriguez. I didn't know this one was so long, so I have to finish it up tomorrow. I really like the ending, too. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be PG. I'm going to sign off here. And thank you for watching.